Or I've been on the under the needle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Four of my tattoos blend together to make two separate. This last tattoo comes around. Um, it starts here, it goes down into here, and comes back up. And it was done after hours at a tattoo shop. I don't have any flash work. And you know what flash is, right? That flash like is the stuff that's on the walls. And okay, yeah. That you can, that everybody number 63, get. please. Yeah, I'm never going to have flash. Just, I don't Just something you believe in. I, personally, yeah. I got married, I thought. Um, he broke up with me after I got out to California because he wanted to be with some other girl. I seem to pick all the winners. He's he's nowhere right now. He's doing nothing and going nowhere, which I think is perfect karma. They keep associating vampires and goths, and like we're getting this awful reputation, and that's why I have people right here in the park saying to me before, like, ah, you know, like making vampire references and, and, and saying they're going to stake me and stuff, or asking me to suck their blood. And we hate Marilyn Manson. Not a Marilyn Manson. We don't Manson. like him, and people think we do. It's like this whole new wave of, I have nothing against him or his music, okay, let me not say that, let me, like, that's wrong. But we don't like his fans because they're these, we call them spooky kids. I don't know if they call oh, themselves spooky yeah. kids. Is that like a normal term? No, have I've you ever heard, heard that before? Can you explain spooky kids to I have no idea where that came from, but they're called spooky kids and they all have this kind of, you can tell them apart from goths because they wear striped tights and they have really smeared makeup, like like all over the place. Just all over. Yeah, and they're they're always wearing Marilyn Manson t-shirts. <laughs> always, it's like there must be 900 Marilyn Manson t-shirts because they're always wearing them. And they have somehow gotten associated with goth, I guess, because they're wearing black lipstick or a lot of makeup or whatever. And it's another way that we're getting a bad name. But now I have an iguana named Maynard and. Not an iguana, a skink named Maynard, and he's really sweet. He's one of the skinks are kind of burrowers. They're not like the iguanas are kind of more climbers, so they're more aggressive. Skinks are burrowers, so they're they're kind of shy, and he would never try to hurt you or anything. I let him crawl around the house. And I have 97 <laughs> pairs of shoes. You have 97 yeah, pairs of shoes. Yeah, so he like crawls in and out of them. Dung tank. Thing. Yeah, the dung tank um, thing. I think the reason that they kept me so long and I was really good at it is because in that neighborhood, Bensonhurst is where it is. It's like this total Guido neighborhood. And I was like the only one there that wasn't this total Guido, even at that young age, you know? Even in my early teens, I was always weird. So I would totally make fun of them. And they would spend exorbitant amount of money trying to Try dunk to me. Down. I would be like, hey, hey, Vinny in the pink shirt, you know? Uh, what are you, a fag? And they can't stand yeah, that. They freak. Oh. They spent like $40 trying to dunk me. They totally freak out. Well, I'm a musician. I have a band called the Downtown Rhythm Section. And we play all over the city. You know, I chill with the fellas. I chill with my girl. And I also sing. You know, someone will hook up a microphone to me. You know what I'm saying? So is that hard to do, do you both at the same time? Is that something you had to work on growing up? Or is that something just natural? You know, you're able to... Yeah, you know, I've been playing for about seven, eight years now. I just incorporated my voice into the act. There's two guitarists and a bassist, and, and I'm on drums. And we all sing, we do all types of music. It's not one certain type of, right. you know what I'm saying? It's all types, Child. it's a collaboration cool. of everything. I've known him since kindergarten. And we sort of, we've chilled through elementary. In junior high, we got split up a little. But we started chilling again a lot in high school, and I met like my the other two cats through him. So, okay, so I, I wind up, I beep her, and she calls me back. And as she calls me back, Satya walks by. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, Christy, call me right back. Uh, I gotta go, call me right back. So I hang up the phone with her, and I was like, Satya, you don't want to go out tonight, do you? You know, I'm like, please come out with me, because I just called Christy. <laughs> and she's like, I pity you. I'm like, okay, we're going out. I was like, no way. So we like ditched out, and like, Whatever, I was just like, didn't even wait for him to call back. Like, the most eeriest thing about her was that she looks like death. Like, death impersonated. She's like, she's like, she's well, not like a dog. She's like, you know, she just looks like death. Like, death, like, like, from, like, it takes, like, and, like, sucks you in, and you're like, ah! Eh. just walk, like, towards, like, I didn't even, like, understand what we were doing, but I was just so, like, tired and, like, not even knowing, understanding. And we were trying to call this girl, like, the same girl that we didn't want to talk to. The same girl that I didn't want to talk to before, because she looks, like, dead. Like, it was, like, her party and could get a shot list. And she had, like, a guest list, so we could get the So we were, like, trying to call her, and we were, like, we're going to all these phones, and this one phone, like, you know how to have, like, a number, and we're, like, looking to see if they have numbers, so they call back. And, like, this one thing, like, it just has a little bit, like, 
this phone does not call back. But the number of space is like this phone makes no incoming calls. We're like, oh, okay. okay. Most people have the sense not to talk to me. And this guy, I don't know where he's from. I swear to God, he comes to me and he's like, he's just making jokes. And I told him, I told him, why are you talking to me? You're not funny. And he just had this totally blank look on his face, like he didn't understand why I didn't want to speak to him. Like, I guess everybody in his hometown likes me behind the counter of a movie theater. I was that girl. I was the girl you wanted to slap every time you went to go to Pop Market Soda. We were so mean to everybody. Where do you work? I work at Kinko's. Could you tell us about that? Let's see, I am overeducated, underqualified, so I can't get a job anywhere else. I, um, it's, uh, disrespectful, insulting, and, uh, too stressful for what I'm getting paid for. And then tried to photocopy their breasts. That wow. was fun. What did you do? I, uh, Stood in the back and watched, as always. Uh, when you say as always, has this kind of thing happened before? Uh, I... Mm, nothing like that before, no. Mm -hmm. what, what has happened? Um, how can I put it? Sometimes I think it's better just to sit back and watch. So what was your job during the night shift? I was the computer guy. Okay, and that entailed what is it? Um, sitting around and making sure nobody stole the computer, pretty much. Mm -hmm. While I sat there, played on the internet all night long. Oh, okay. It was a uh, fairly tedious and boring, but yeah, it was okay. So you would while away the, the hours on the internet. Yes. Gotcha. Downloading the pornography. I see. That's what I think you were fishing for. That was a bad situation. I let myself go a little too far there. Mm -hmm. and, were uh, you taken advantage of or vice versa? Yeah, I was taken advantage of. Financially, emotionally. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a good thing. What do you eat? And do you go to oh, fast eat, food uh, places? And oh, yeah. Food? Taco Bell, Jack in the Box. Anywhere where you can get a free toy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the free toy of the month is, whatever place it is. Uh, Fat Burger. In and out burger. Do you have any good blind date stories? Or, or yeah. A girl I'd known for maybe about a year. Um, we were both single on Valentine's Day. So I said, you know, what the hell? Why don't you and I go out on Valentine's Day? She says, oh, great. Sounds like fun. So um, we go out and we have dinner and we go to a bar and we hang out for a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, it, things didn't go great, but they didn't go bad either. And at the, uh, the end of the night, we were about to part ways, and uh, she gave me the good night high five. <laughs> Instead of the kiss. Not the, uh, the kiss I didn't expect. The handshake would have been proper. But the yeah. high five. <laughs> mm. And you actually start to lean in or anything? Or? No, no, not at all. <laughs> just like, you just, okay, let's go. Uh -huh. And just you know, sit home and play video games. In one... <laughs> A uh, two-day period I played for 24 hours. I played one 12-hour session and one 10-hour session. And I beat a game in two, in two. And what would you take breaks for? Obviously, you had to go to the bathroom. bathroom. That was about it. You didn't eat? Or did you have all eat. the stuff all set? Do you set up all the stuff around you so you don't have to take a break? Uh, if I... I can't remember at the time if I had money or not. Because uh, I tend to get really poor. So I, uh, I go a couple days without eating. Like, I think at the time I might have had money, so I probably ordered a pizza or something. Just breaking it. Breaking it. What do you mean by breaking it? You know, potential uh, good thing happens and just drop the ball three or four years ago, shortly after I moved up here. And uh, I was going out with this girl for a little while. And we, were, we went out, it was a weekend, like a Saturday afternoon or something. We were just walking around the village. And... Uh, and she runs into a friend of hers that she hadn't seen in a while. And I thought that was pretty much the end of that, but another date ruined. Uh, so we ended up going back to her. This girl who was actually 
the mistress of some guy. So he had like his bachelor pad in the city. Uh, so we went back there. He was, I guess, home with his wife or something. We hung out there for a little while, blah, 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 and ended up going out and having drinks for a couple hours. And we all got drunk and ended up back at the girl's place and uh, pretty much been with two chicks in one night, and I, uh, I went home. Okay. Because <laughs> I couldn't handle it. Well, why couldn't you handle it? I don't know. Just kind of a big retard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> If I had to do it over again, I'd probably, I don't know what I would do, I'd probably do it. Skateboarding early on in the 80s, we went through it's the surfer stage when it first started, and then it went into like the full punk scene, and now it's, it's really merged in with like hip-hop and graffiti, and that's like a big part of skateboarding now, and I think the reason it goes hand in hand is it's basically, it's identically the same thing, you know, if someone gets a pan and they can do whatever they want, anywhere they want, and you give them a skateboard and you can do anything you want, anywhere you want. Really good guys over there. And then there's the guys that are just magazine bred, like kids that go out and learn tricks without trying to learn how to ride their skateboards. <laughs> they, they would come here and you, you know, they would just, they would have the worst time. I mean, they would be, they would have fun at the skate spots, you know, and they'd be able to do tricks. But having to skate through traffic and skits on cabs and like do stuff, you know, down the streets. When I grew up skating like in cities in Atlanta and, and throughout all over the United States, and I've always skated downtown areas, so you just kind of. You get in tune with noises and, and, and see where cars are and your, your vision's everywhere so you kind of know what's going on and uh, those guys don't. Like I've seen, I've brought friends that are amazing skateboarders that can do the best tricks but it. cannot, did not grow, they grew up in like the suburbs or like out in the country or whatever and they come to the city and they're like, you know, they're just whipping and out of cabs in front of cabs through intersections and stuff, grabbing onto the back of cabs and they're just like, you know, you'll get to the spot and you're all rested and hanging out waiting and they're coming up like, <laughs> you know, they've done, they've already pushed like 12 blocks and you've got like a free six, eight block ride on the cab, you know. You like pretend like you're pro and you're not. The only like, difference is so like me right now, I'm not skating, like right now I would have skate shoes on if I was skating. Or I, if it's hot, I would have shorts on and then whatever. But if you, there's like the dope guy look now, you know, like you gotta just be like, yo, what's up? Like my, uh, <laughs> I fall, I'm like, gotta clean myself off. Like, that's cool, <laughs> that's cool if you're really good, you know, and you do skate and you can support it. But there's guys who like, Look like, damn, that guy must be good. You know, you look at him and he puts a skateboard down. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> I don't understand it. I get psyched on seeing good work, but Daniel, you know, like, there's a couple guys he hangs out with when we drive, and they're like, yeah, man, we gotta stop and paint. We gotta stop and paint. I'm just like, come on, man, let's just go. I wanna go skate. I wanna go here. I wanna do that. You know? And they're like, all right, well, here, just like, take the keys. We're beating this back here. We're gonna go paint or whatever. And I'm like, we're in the middle of nowhere. No, you know, no one's gonna see it. You know, like, it doesn't matter. Doesn't going matter. Down, it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, all right, screw it. They're not to leave. Just be all pissed. I think it's our store in San Diego. I know they're gonna have pain markers. Where the hell is it? You know, and they don't have spray paint. What the hell? And I turn over my shoulder, and there's just this like a jail cell <laughs> of paint markers on the bottom and spray paint up top. Like, what the hell? What? I'm like, I go and I get it, and I ask the ladies, and then I get it out, and I get like a bunch of them, different ones every round. They're like, Do you have ID? What? Like, do you have ID for this? And I'm like, are you serious? You know, I'm in Florida, where I live, where I, I moved to California from Florida. I'm like, what are you talking about? ID to buy paint bins? I mean, you can't go to any city in, in the world and not find some sort of graffiti. But it's like this great form of art. And the whole, like, tagging thing started up, and, and, and when people would go over other people for, you know, disrespecting them, I mean, you can get into problems as far as uh, them wanting some revenge or something. But So, I mean, so you get a tag. So you kind of, the whole graffiti thing is, is, is really underground. It's, it's almost like a secret society. You do your thing and you're, you know, a normal person by day and at night you, you know, take off your mask and you go and do something. How about yourself? Or you go out with uh, I used to, when I was younger, when I used to like bomb, when I used to do more illegal stuff, uh, at times I used to go out by myself. I would get a car or, or just, uh, you know, park it somewhere and walk tra tra like train tracks like for miles. Once you do it and you like understand it, like it's it's seriously like a drug. It's like it's something you get the itch. Walk in like an idiot and just be like, uh, you know, you know, ask stupid questions about something that was always by the spray paint and uh, they would tell me and I'd they'd walk away and I'd have a book bag and I'd throw in a few of my book bag and throw in under my a big fat jacket and like when you're a young kid you don't have money to go buy spray paint and, and the walls I was doing at the time and still are, you know, like three stories high and like huge. And like, you can't buy that much paint, but it's also really fun. So you kind of want to do it with your friends. So, you know, you, 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 um, you have this, this whole thing of like crews where I'd say I would write sub 
and then DF or FX, which are two crews that I pretty much hang out with and paint with, and that's how they know me, and they know me, you know, oh, we know your boy, and so it's like a, it's like a little family. When I first started getting into, like, hey, look, I like doing this stuff, I'm going to go get a wall, and I'm just going to take my time and just make it as cool as I can, and for a while, people were just like, nope, that's, that's bull. Like, it has to be illegal, it has to be at night, you know, it has to be, like, against so it's kind of like society. The rules almost. Yeah, which, it, which totally goes against the whole premise of graffiti in the first place. So when I want to go do a wall, if it's legal, I'll do it. If it's illegal, I'll do it. You know, I'll figure out a way to do it. And it's, uh, and, you know, that's where I think it's, it's, it has so much energy. No rules at all. And that's what I think is great about graffiti. A lot of people try to put rules on it, and that's the whole beauty of it. Flesh is falling off of me. I'm not half the man I used to be. Oh, how did I get leprous? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Interpretive dance. Yeah. Wait, that's all. Scroll. Tum. <laughs> Covered with scraggly hair. <laughs> Veins of my penis. <sighs> Pulsing in my c c c c c. My penis is like a log. So says Snoop Doggy Dog. And his little brother Snoopy and Scrappy and little dopey doggy ding. They love that thing with my scrot. I don't gloat over my scrot. It just hangs while my balls bang. Look at it. That's my scrot. It's small, oh man. <laughs> Two pounds of dope in my scrot. Sailing along on a boat through a moat under a castle in the sky. I'm feeling more than that. I'm feeling the hairs on my scrot get so long, I'm gonna braid them. I'm gonna tie them around my legs. I'm gonna tie them around my feet. Between my toes, where nobody goes except the jam and jelly between my scrotal hair. Feel it. Makes you squeal it. Touch it. It's squishy, like guam bushy. Cats, you know what I'm saying? That was my sperm. <laughs> Come on, my scrot. Yeah. See my sperm dance. Sperm dance. In its underpants. Underpants. <laughs>